stepped out of Alice Springs, stopped at this little rest stop. It's, um, there's a little globe just above me. That's marking the Tropic of Capricorn, where I think we saw it at Winton and um, over at Carnarvon. So I've joined the dots. So pretty cool, the Tropic of Capricorn just outside of Alice Springs. Just a few more k's up the road, we'll stop and uh, we'll take it easy. Rawdy ho. Well, after leaving the Tropic of, Tropic of Capricorn, we've gone and found ourselves this little parking spot here. A little bit of a grey day, and uh, we've got 360 odd k's or to uh, our destination where we want to be about Devil's Marbles. One spot we missed when we came down, we did Tenant Creek, but we didn't go any further, and uh, we're going to try that out. But we're not in a hurry, we might take a couple of days just to. Uh, um, stay just here and then uh, go and have a look and experience what else is on the way. So in the meantime, this little stop here, which is about um, 40 odd k's out of Alice, will do us quite fine. Thank you very much. Time to relax and enjoy things without the hustle and bustle of the busy city of Alice. And to point on that, um, Alice was great. Daytime was good. Um, night time, who knows, um, but generally speaking, um, I didn't find, and Jude didn't find any problem whatsoever in Alice, so, uh, you know, lock your cars up, keep your valuables to yourself and things, don't go into any risky situations, but, um, yeah, it worked out really, really well, good spot, loved it, it was very, very busy, we'll catch ya. Welcome back, our sweet as RVing YouTube followers. Thanks for following us. Um, been a hell of a few days. Been real, real busy course in um, Alice Springs. Man, that was great. Five days there, but we needed some peace, quiet, just calm down and relax. And 40 k's out of um, Alice Springs, we found a little camp, Bert's camp, or now called Hemi's camp on Wiki's camp. Great little spot, nice wide open space. We sat there and relaxed and did a bit of computer work and things. So we've just come up the road a little bit. A little bit busy at the moment as everybody's heading back to the Fink and, and places. But we just headed up the road a bit and I uh, found this little uh, memorial here for Peter Egerton Warburton. Now he had a pretty high falutin job, something to do with police commissioners and all that sort of stuff um, and uh, just got the better of him and he uh, decided he wanted to go adventuring. Well he did a lot of adventuring around uh, Melbourne and uh, well, Victoria or someplace around there and I think he's even got a river named after him. Anyway, one of his biggest achievements, he got a group together, uh, some camelairs and uh, an, an, an Aboriginal bushman back in uh, 1872, September, and he traveled from Adelaide up this way. He got here, this is the um, plaque, the memorial here that's significant, it's signifying the turn left. He wanted to find a route through to the west coast. So he turned left here. Well, it was one huge journey across here to uh, the west coast. He came across, uh, yeah, obviously heat, and starvation, and a bit of thirst and things. He went across uh, the, I think it's the, the Tam, Taman Desert. Um, there's a number of deserts out there. Anyway, uh, he turned up, I think, um, near death at um, De Grey's station. And of course, that rings a bell with us. You'll see in some of our other issues there, we um, uh, stayed at De Grey's River. So um, he was um, found about there near death and um, he was, uh, well his team, his party and things were all uh, revived a little bit and he continued through to, uh, I think it was Roburn um, and made it there in January 1874. So wow, 
what a trek. One of those adventurers, um, hey, nowadays we do it in a, a nice little car or a motorhome and things. So um, yeah, that was one huge, huge trek. Anyway, we're gonna move on um, up to our next little port of call and uh, see what's up there. All right, just driven some amazing straight roads. Yeah, Nullarbor was pretty cool. We saw some nice uh, big long straight road there, but you know, just terrific surface and uh, come up to this little spot. Another engineering feat. Ned Ryan, this is, uh, I think it's Ryan's well. Ned Ryan was also started out as a bit of an adventurer. He uh, went and surveyed uh, Arnhem Land um, back in uh, 1866 and he got stranded out there and ended up having to um, build a raft and uh, drift some 13 odd kilometres of um, I think it was Alligator Creek at the time and that uh, says what was in there. Lots of uh, crocodiles, alligators and they ended up drifting out to a bit of uh, out to sea and then of course they ended up con contending with sharks so all bugger. So uh, he's a stonemason, I believe, and of course then he followed his uh, stonemason passion and um, followed out this way to sink wells for the telegraph station. Because don't forget, the telegraph station from uh, Adelaide, uh, Alice Springs, and it goes all the way through to Darwin, we're following it. So um, obviously those um, people following the, the telegraph line um, it was handy for for stock and farms and things like that so this well was one of many that were sunk um just looking here there's one two three four five six seven eight nine ten there's yeah between here or well, the other side of alice springs and out through to tea tree yeah so quite a few so this one here worked in an interesting way you see down the far end there there's either camels or horses and they were tethered to this well and this well was about um 70 uh, meters I think it was seven, no, 24 meters deep. And it had two buckets, I believe, that were about 70 liters in capacity. And the, obviously the, the camel or the horse would walk away, one bucket would come up, get to the top, tip, and this area here with the, with the flat stones would have been a storage tank that would go into there. And then at the end of the storage tank, they could open up a valve and it would run into the trough and they, they would be able to water for stock and um, people that traveled through here with their stock and everything, there's a, um, a, a station house over here and they would charge so that um, then earn a bit to pay for the well, I guess. Um, there was also a, um, a hand winder, winder up here. So if people were traveling through and needed a drink of water, um, they could use the hand winder rather than the um, if there wasn't any horse or camel nearby or I guess you could probably use the tap here if you could but they could bring up a bucket themselves so yeah amazing a bit of technology engineering gone in here it's been restored so a lovely job so there you have it camel down this end Buckets are two buckets at the top. Cool. Well, one bucket at the top, the other one's probably still down 24 meters. So there you have it. Little camel man at the far end of the well. Across the road, 1914, Glen Maggie's Sheeps and Cattle Station was started. 
and when passing travellers came through they charged a small fee for them to drink. journey so far 134 k's back to Alice Springs our destination is the Devil's Marbles that's where we want to go so a little stop is uh, Alaron I think they call the place so uh, there's uh, just taking some photos of some nice uh, little statues but if you, you look back underneath the canopy here somewhere there's a, uh, a warrior an Aboriginal um, up on the hill there pretty fantastic so we'll see what sort of uh, shots we can get around here I'm gonna go and have a look at the roadhouse and see what uh, what's in there too all right just left the little uh, roadhouse awesome little roadhouse as I said there's a caravan park here as well which looks pretty cool there's donkeys and camels across the road which you can go and visit another place you can go and visit how's this I'll probably walk too close to it now and you won't see it ah oh, there it is woman child and uh, them there lizardly things awesome statue it's talking to the guy at um, at the roadhouse there I think his name the guy that um, created all these was Glenn Eaton I'm sorry if I've got it wrong Jude you might want to correct if I've got them got it wrong but yeah wicked statues the lizards and um, I don't know whether you can see them over my shoulder from here there he is and Jude's got the, got the drone going, but definitely a good place to stop, put it on the map, and uh, we could, oh, the art shop, sadly closed, and a lot of the reviews that I've been reading, it's uh, quite often closed, but um, if you ever get the opportunity to have a look through the window, well, have, get it while it's open, it looks really um, pretty awesome. There's some artwork here, but there's some, also some artwork I believe you can purchase over at the Roadhouse as well. But just had a little gander in there and it looked um, pretty neat if you want a little bit of Aboriginal art and things and also some, some nice little portrait type stuff around too. So uh, a neat little stop here. I hope I said the name of the town right. <laughs> I'm not going to say it again just in case I was wrong. Well, amazing. We have traveled, and it's not like a huge way, but we've had nothing but scrub and crappy bush and a bit of deserty looking stuff around. And then you turn up here, behind me, mango trees. And then over on this side, grapes. What amazing country. Stopped here for a fuel up, pretty reasonable fuel and uh, there's a bit of water here and things too um, and a shop here that does mango sorbets so we'll go in and have a look
thought we just dived into this beautiful little uh, store and uh, bumped into Brendan here. He pumps your gas. How good's that? That's a dying art around these days. Picked up some um, some mango squirrel sorbet and uh, just having a walk around the shelves. A really good, uh, reasonable um, shop to come and see for all your bits and pieces. The prices are good. Um, there's some hot pies to grab, some ice cream, some Coca Cola, and uh, yeah, must stop and see. And fill up. Diesel is the, the cheapest between like here in Alice Springs and Antenna Creek. Creek. So yeah, pretty good value. All right. A neat little trip today. <laughs> Excuse my goat, mate. Uh, he's uh, he's pleased to see me. I tell you what, I reckon the goat over there, um, the Model T Ford, the horn that's on it. I reckon this is where he got it from. He's not going to make a sound now. But I hope he quietens down over the night. But great little sight here. Um, well, I guess you got one, two, three, four, it's not like five, but you could squeeze a few more in, I'm sure. And um, security gates there, and there he is. <laughs> and uh, little Airbnb cottages here as well. And um, it's a donation camp, so leave a donation and uh, patronize the uh, the store as well, which has got everything. I mean, you can buy fridges and freezers, TVs. Um, and all your grocery items there. Um, there's fuel and uh, petrol and uh, diesel here as well. So uh, plenty here in the, uh, the little town. That's about it. I'm going to go for a little walk because there is a roadhouse across the road as well and um, see what's over there. There's a caravan park over there where you can stay. Oh, it's got to get out of the gate. Where are you? Ooh. And push it the right way for starters. Ooh, we'll go that way. Onwards. Behind me is the tea tree food barn, and that's where you got that uh, your donation camp down there. You might be a little bit worried about when you turn off the road where exactly it all is, but yeah, you can see this dirt gravel road. Just drive down there, go and see the girls at the counter, make uh, yourself aware, they'll give you a gate code. And you go around and help yourself. Uh, there's no power, but there's water. How good's that? So uh, that'll be nice. And uh, yeah, I'm just going for a little stroll in the town of Tea Tree. So as you can see, there's a, there's a hell of a lot of, a lot of land around. Here's the, uh, the servo of the roadhouse. That's where I'm having a little walk over to now. Uh, I think I can see a fire station. And here's yeah, the park. And over here, I think I can hear water water tank supply. So uh, all a little stroll, Let's see what's about. Well, you didn't see any inside, I didn't want to film. <laughs> the Tea Tree Roadhouse. As you can see by the amount of vans all parked around here. Sure is a busy spot. Um, quite a bit of history there. It was quite good to read some of it there on the wall. The most central pub in Australia. That's what I found out. Um, also found out. It's well visited by the locals and she's quite noisy, so. I'm busy. And I'm quite pleased we found a nice way off the road site <laughs> to stay the night. I don't mind uh, Henry Ford the goat barring away every now and again when you have to put up with all this noise. I'm sure it, most nights all dies down, but uh, trust me, nicest spot across the road. I'm very pleased with our, with our choice. However, if you want to feed a drink, Pub wise, it's probably the place to go. Um, the the tea tree food barn over here, Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Saturday, 9 a.m. to 12 noon, and on Sunday they're closed. So make sure you put that in your itinerary. Um, but yeah, we'll go with that.
go and find where Jude is and how she's getting along. As you can see, we've moved on. It's been a great stay. Look at sun. It was a great stay at Tea Tree, highly recommended. Uh, the food barn, um, definitely stay there. It was a good donation. Um, go and see them for that uh, gate code and uh, can't fault it. We'll actually probably stay there on the way back. It was, uh, it was that good. And uh, yeah, made a nice, fairly, it's not an early, early start, but uh, a grand start, beautiful day. And we're going to see here at the uh, Stuart Memorial to start with, eh? And then move on. So we have a nice little monument commemorating, obviously this is the Stuart Highway, so uh, yeah, pretty uh, an amazing man with a bit of resilience there. He attempted the, uh, the crossing or the navigation of this highway um, to survey it um, a few times, I think there might be five, um, and finally made it all the way through from the south of the coast of Australia to the north of the coast of Australia. So uh, pretty amazing feat back then. Um, I'll tell you another amazing feat and it, um, oh, that's, I don't know where the word, but it goes with uh, where we saw the mangoes in the, uh, the vineyards. There's a bloke here in, um, I'm not going to pronounce his surname, but it's, uh, well, De Hallenberg or something like that. Um, he sadly passed away October in uh, 2011. But he was one of the pioneers of um, recognising the, uh, the ability to grow those mangoes and um, the, uh, the vineyards. So uh, pretty amazing bloke himself too to, to put uh, a bit of greenery into this uh, desolate place. The Ian's Memorial, it says a modern day pioneer whose vision became reality. be able to feed trough, uh, feed trough. <laughs> they would be able to water for stock. And come on you little radio, you are just being a pain in the bloody butt today aren't you? I hit you filming. Okay. This time.